for the first time in the 35-year history of the sport of the UIM Formula One World Championship comes the spectacular Evian, a second round of the World Championship at the 19th Grand Prix of France. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Steve Michael, along with my partner, many-time world champion, Jonathan Jones. And we welcome you here live on the edge of the French Alps on lovely Lake Lemoine. And before we explore the stories leading up to today's Grand Prix, let's set the stage by giving you a video postcard of this breathtaking area of Evian, France. Elegantly perched on the border between France and Switzerland, northeast of Geneva in the East French Alps, Evian's internationally renowned healing waters have lured health-conscious visitors from around the world since 1824. It's France's most celebrated spa resort, but this is only the beginning. There are so many must-sees on your tour to Evian. Start by going to the famous water and musical gardens, followed by a trip to the thermal spa. Then try your luck at the largest theme casino in Europe. And how about a 35 minute boat trip across the lake to the lovely Riviera town of Lausanne on the Swiss side. Evian recently won the award for the best resort in France by the World Travel Awards judging the total beauty, the proximity to summer and winter activities all along with its famous healing waters adding up to one of Europe's must see areas. Feel more culture, feel more water, Feel more relaxation. Feel more fun. Feel Evian France. Well, back here live on a gorgeous early summer afternoon here on Lake Lemoine, the race circuit has been hailed by all drivers as a good one for dynamic passing opportunities with a pair of long straightaways and high speeds. Now, Jonathan, you won twice here in France. What's your thoughts on this 2.3 kilometer circuit? Well, I'll be honest with you, Steve, I think this is the best circuit we've had for a long, long time. We've got long straights, we've got a massive expanse of water out there, and I think for the first time you're going to see a lot of overtaking, and uh, there's about six or seven guys there that are really going to be pushing, so I think it's going to be probably one of the most exciting Grand Prix that we've seen in many uh, uh, a year. You know, there's some real drama and a myriad of missteps yesterday afternoon. Here are a few of the more memorable moments in qualifying. There was a myriad of mishaps on the water yesterday afternoon. First, it was David L. Penn of Team Abu Dhabi, the first driver out. He took out turn number three, stopped Q1 for 20 minutes, and he was retired from the proceedings. And then Sean Torrente put on a spectacular show as he desperately was chasing a top six shootout. But this is what ended the afternoon as Team Emirates driver Ahmed Al Hamli launching himself in the air, spectacularly blowing the boat over. And thankfully, he was okay, but his crowd cheered him on. We went into day two of qualifying on Sunday. Well, Florida driver Sean Torrente leads this championship after his win in Doha back in March. And since then, he's been scrambling after his guitar team disbanded. It left him without a ride, no crew, and little hope of continuing. But he never gave up and has now aligned himself with the victory team. Starting fourth this afternoon, this America is back and ready to attack. Let's hear from him. Yeah, being here with the victory team has been great. Um, we've done an amazing job in seven, eight days. Um, our goal was top five. We're lined up for that top five. Um, if we get a little luck in the race, maybe we get a podium. Um, but the goal is just to get a good start, clean start, and see where we end up. Oh, it's going to be, uh, yeah, it's all the usual suspects and Yusuf's up there too, so it's going to be interesting for sure. I got Sammy on my right. It's going to be tough. Thank you. Well, 19 drivers from 12 different nations came here this weekend for the 19th Grand Prix of France. Let's take a look at today's starting grid. Philippe Shep on the pole, the native from France, world champion, 162-kilometer lap. Yusuf Al-Robian next to him, his best ever. Alex Corella, three-time world champion in third. And Sean Trente, who leads this championship back and forth. Looking farther down, a pair of Swedes has the young uh, Eric Stark ahead of another young 21-year-old driver, Jesper Fors. And you look farther down, a couple of French drivers have made the top 12, and you can see that uh, they're making their presence known in their very first race in a long, long time. Farther down, Duarte Benevente struggled yesterday. Of course, Ahmed El Hamli had the accident. And uh, Francesco Catando down in 17th. That's a place where he doesn't feel he feels comfortable with. And, of course, two drivers dropping out in the end. They didn't get a chance to run yesterday in qualifying. So there you go, 17 drivers, 34 laps around. And we're getting excited. Now, two drivers starting second and third today are looking for their first podium of the year. For Kuwaiti driver Yusuf Al Robian, he's second. That's a career best. And for Alex Corella, the three time world champion, it's all about learning to drive his new boat. <laughs> The 
conference is great today, comparing with yesterday, and wow, it's not going to be easy, and I need to protect the people who's behind me, so I will do my best. Who's the best? <laughs> I know that, I'm always the best. We are still learning a bit, we, we build really like a, a bit extreme ball, so we, we have to work really good for the balance and the propeller, but I think uh, for the first uh, went out of this boat be at only 0 0.1 to Philippe, I think he's uh, really good, he's, uh, we are comfortable for the race, so for us it's a good result. Uh, race will be long, so be there uh, is important for us. Welcome Lupo, my friend. Grazie mille. Well, one driver and all of France will be watching and cheering for in victory on home waters this afternoon as defending world champion Philippe Shep. How's this pilot for moi handling all the pressure that evolves when you are on pole position and a hometown hero? Yes, I know. I have a lot of support there and uh, big pressure for me, big pressure for my team, but very good pressure I like and uh, I do my best on the first lap. Maybe I make a two mistake. And the second lap, I push very hard, and I think uh, for me, at home, uh, we make the job this morning, and uh, with self rest, we can win. My team is very strong. Merci beaucoup. Well, Jonathan, it all began back in 1981 in Vichy, France, when Case van der Velden picked up the first checkered flag in this country in his 35 years of racing. And of course, Renato Molinari won a pair in Vichy and then Lyon later on. They had a race in Paris. And then Charlon Sursault was 10 years in the making from 1990 to 2000. And then eventually uh, the last race. It's been eight years since we've returned to France. La Rochelle, Sami Celio picking up his first ever career victory. He's gone on to become a two-time world champion. Celio will be down in that fifth spot today. Interesting as you take a look at the starting lineup here where you've got uh, the veteran, Philippe Shep, who has picked up the world championship this past year. But Yusuf Al-Robian, he's going to start second today. He's never started this high before. It'll be interesting to see what kind of enthusiasm he has as he charges off the line. Yeah, the boat looks really, really well balanced on the water. Even this morning when the conditions were rough, he was putting up some blinding times there. Um, and, you know, they're working very close with uh, uh, Mr. Ranan, I beg your pardon, Mr. Ranan Rabojevic. I think I've got that right. And um, it, it just looks a strong package. There's no question about it. And he'd be one of the guys to look out for today. But this morning in free practice, Alex Carella, my goodness, he looked fast out there. It looks like he was talking that the boat was a development boat and uh, you know they've had to they've gone quite extreme on it and with boats like that it does take a little bit of time for you to ac actually get them dialed in and uh, it looked this morning as though they'd made a lot of headway yesterday in in the conditions that we had and he'll certainly be one to watch out for today at this grand prix alex corella three-time world champion jumped from the qatar team to join team abu dhabi late in uh, march or back in february actually just before the grand prix in qatar and oddly enough, he's starting against side by side with his old teammate today, Sean Torrente, who will start in the fourth spot next to him. You can see just a bit of his blue boat off to your right there. Torrente, uh, tell you what, he's done well. He's qualified well, considering that the boat that he's gotten into has been sitting two years in a hot shed out in the desert in Dubai, and they went through it like a fine tooth cone, cleaning that boat up and making sure it's ready. But yet at the same time, you got to wonder if it's all going to pay off dividends. Now, the boat was run before by uh, uh, Jay Price a couple of years ago. And Jay struggled with it because it also had been sitting a bit. Yeah, but I think the one thing about uh, Sean Torrente is that he's an exceptionally good driver. I mean, he was telling me most people are good at something. I seem to be good at racing a boat. And whatever you put him in, he's going to do well in it, you know. And uh, to be honest, the team that are with him, there's a lot of the guys that came over from the uh, Qatar team that he was with before. And um, they have prepared that boat really well. Um, you know, because it's an old boat, doesn't mean to say, or oldish boat, doesn't mean to say that it's not competitive. Because although all these boats are developed, every year um, you know it doesn't mean that when you make a try to make an improvement it always works and I think for this particular circuit here he looks like he's going to be very very strong and again one of the guys to watch out for tension starting to build less than a minute to go we start focusing in on the lights as the lights will come on one row at a time and once they go off we will go racing 34 tours around this 3.3 kilometer race course one right-hander five left-handers on uh, Lake Geneva here, lack <laughs>
Lac Lemoine, uh, as they commonly call it here in France, and uh, a huge spectator fleet behind us. Less than 20 seconds to go. The board is up. We hold our breath now. All eyes glued on the official starter. We wait for the rows of lights to come on. As the drivers now, first row of lights, second row of lights, seconds before the start, and the lights go off and run away and explode away from the dock. 10,000 horsepower as they rocket away and they head down toward that commitment buoy. Now toward turn number five as the field of 17 boats as drivers from 12 different nations slide through on the first return to Europe and into France, especially the country of France for the first time in eight years since 2007. On the jump, everybody's watching the man out in front. Philippe Shep, the world champion, gets the lead early on and a big switch there as Joseph Robians dropped back. Having a bit of a problem, Els Carella now taking up the charge. Side by side now, Torrente challenging the driver from Kuwait for third. Stunning st uh, start there by Philippe Chiap, the French driver, the current world champion. Boy, did that boat accelerate off the, uh, the pontoon. But closely followed now behind him is Carella, pushing hard in that new DSC. We talked about it earlier this morning, saying that it was very, very fast, but because it was so extreme, it was difficult to set the boat up. But as we look at it at the moment, the Mo boat built in France, driven by a French driver and sponsored by a French team, is setting a blinding pace. He's got clear water for a while, so hopefully he'll be able to increase that gap. Sean Torrente, the guy we spoke about earlier, Steve, up in third. All right, Torrente making the move. Yusuf Robi now being challenged on the outside for that four spot by Jonas Anderson. Anderson this week trying to make a move, but right now the difference between first and second place is 1.6 seconds as they hustle down this long straightaway close to 600 meters down into turn number two, Jonathan. Yeah, you can see Carella there again almost losing control of the boat as he went over those rollers on the far end of the circuit. We've got Sean Torrente there coming into view, running very strong in third position and slowly but surely closing down on that second slot. Who's made the move upward as we take a look at the man out in charge? He is out in front. That's Philippe Sheffier, world champion, looking for his third victory in his last last four starts, finishing off the last two races of 2014. Chap there still in the lead, but certainly the second place guy, uh, Carella, starting to close down on him now, Steve. As they get to the rough end, you can see there the boats going from side to side because the conditions for the first three or four laps are going to be really difficult here. One of the unhappy campers is this one right here. That's uh, Sami Celio. He started in fifth. He's back in sixth. He's not making the charge to try to get in front of Jonas Anderson, who worked his way around. And this man, Jesper Fors, having a good afternoon. He qualified in that eighth spot. He's sitting in eighth, but the young driver from Sweden getting better and better and more confident, and now he's challenging side by side. Eric Stark, so two Swedish drivers farting for that seventh place position just behind Sami Selio. Yeah, we could see as well that Jonas Andersson sitting in fifth at the moment. is starting to put the pressure on Al Robayan. Qualified second here, fell back two slots, and Andersson now is waiting to pounce and take that fourth place away from him. Well, as our leaders now continue to pile away through, they're moving now into a very difficult portion of the track, four and five, and then five and six here, Jonathan. Yesterday, all sorts of problems with crosswinds, but we don't have that problem today. No, perfect conditions for racing here, and let's hope we see a lot of overtaking as the race goes on. But Philippe Chap there, we've got him in shot there, still in the lead. You can see Carella trying to take a wide line, keep get some clear water and start trying to close down on him. As Sean Torrente in that barber boat lying in third, the victory boat, now starting to put again a lot of pressure. And I think what we're going to find is it looks like Chiap, he's got everything under control there as we talk, as we speak this morning. Uh, at the moment, you can see Torrente there again, having a hard time as he turns the corner. Yeah, struggling through. He's back 5.61 seconds of the leader and at the same time he's about uh, 3.8 seconds back oh my you can see right there on the replay oh struggling to get himself positioned and come back through was that uh, looks like it was the man in second place Alex Corella as he was trying to straighten himself out he almost stuffed it Jonathan yeah you know we've seen with him very very ragged on the water yesterday the boat seeming to be all over the place and it's almost as though he's overdriving the boat and if he does that as he has done in the last lap he's going to lose uh, he's going to lose a gap to the lead driver of Chiap who seems to be pulling away from him driving very very smoothly out there fast <laughs> Oh! 
time of this race so far. Lap was just set a lap ago. Philippe Chef trying to make a move away from Alex Corella, doing a nice job of it. Last time around, it was 1.8 seconds. He did a he laid down a 56 170s up to 3.42 seconds on the driver from Italy who made that misstep and almost stuffed the boat. But that Moore board is handling really, really well. As I said, it's built in northern France by David Moore, the boat builder, who's worked with Philippe Chap over the last four or five years developing this boat. The engine is powered by a Mercury 2.5 V6, probably pushing out about between four and 450 horsepower. That engine is tuned by Alex Ledden from Montreal, another uh, another French-speaking uh, um, uh, uh, tuner, I beg your pardon. And the propellers that they're using on this are, are built by a guy in, um, in Scandinavia. He calls himself Mr. Dynamite, and he's been developing these propellers with them, doing a great job. Corella getting a little bit closer now. He shaved off 1.7 seconds on Philippe Shep after making that mistake, corrected himself, and he looks more confident now as he came whistling past us on his straightaway. So behind uh, this man, our leader, who was looking for his third victory in his last four starts, his first of the year, after picking up his third career pole this morning earlier, after we had an abbreviated uh, top six qualifying, it was forced to be done this morning because of the bad conditions yesterday. But Corella continues to try to push. Sean Torrente now has made a little bit of a gap. He's moved in on Corella just a tad. Jonas Anderson now solidly in fourth place, working his way past Yusuf Robian. And what you're going to find now for Chiap, who's in that lead at the moment, is that they're going to start coming up behind the back markers now. And if one of them doesn't give him any space, this might be an opportunity for for uh, the Abu Dhabi driver there, uh, Corella, to start pouncing on him as we pick up there. The uh, Sean Torrente having some handling problems there, Steve, as the boat skims across the water, nothing of it touching, almost driving it like a low-flying aircraft. Torrente's got two wins in his last four starts. He's had three wins in his last nine. More importantly, he's been on the podium eight of his last 12 starts. Remember, he leads this championship right now after a dazzling victory in Doha back in March. Yeah, you can see there, Chiap there, just going out a shot there, and uh, Carella pushing hard in second position, coming up against some of the back markers as the third-place guy, Torrente, almost loses the control of the boat on that right hand on the far end of the circuit. But you know as well as I do, knowing Sean for as many years that we have, he just relishes this opportunity to throw it around and have a great time. He loves these conditions. He doesn't sit back and uh, hang on for spite. Now, Philippe Shep just passed his teammate, Leo Zhuang, the driver from China, back in a 16th spot, so he's lapped him. Interestingly enough, Ahmed al Hamli has really struggled today. He's way down in the last spot. He was lapped about three laps ago. His best time is a minute and seven seconds. You could see that chap having to take a wide corner because he's coming up some of the back markers. I think the guy that's at the back of the field at the moment appears to be um, uh, Duarte Benevente. And with just seven laps gone, these two guys leading the, the race here are starting to close down and overtake some of the back markers. That's the sort of pace that they're running out here at uh, on this Grand Prix. There you see Sean Torrente going forced wide, slides his way past and continues to charge his way through as he fights his way around with seven laps into this. Torrente is your points leader and he would just love to pick up a victory here today. There you see him going around Ahmed al Hamli. That's really a bit of a surprise for the yeah, driver from that, Abu Dhabi. That is a shame because, uh, you know, we expected a lot from him here. And as you can see right at the front, Steve, we may see a change. You can see Chap on the inside, and Carella is pushing for all he's worth on the outside. All right, the battle for the lead heating up here down at turn number two and three as they fight their way around this circuit. Now Alex Carella right on the hip, trying to make a move, spots it to spots it as he comes out of turn number three. Full flight as they both rock it down side by side. The battle for the front is heating up as Corella is going to be forced to slam on the brakes. Shep holds him off at the right hander, but can he hold him off down in turn number five, Jonathan? Fantastic driving there by Chiap. He closed the door on him on the right hander. As I said, we're coming down to some of the back markers now, and it's going to be really difficult. If they don't give these drivers space, we could see a change. But Chiap, he's opened that gap again. Now he's up to about 1.5 seconds as he comes down through the last turn, boy. And you can see Corella really pushing as hard as he can to close that gap again. Less than a half a second the last time around. Did he get closer? No. Shep started to stretch it out again. He's got it back to over two seconds, so obviously he had an easier time getting around the back markers, and now Torrente is going to be stuck trying to work his way around. Dwarf Benevente has been struggling all <laughs>
weekend. He's down in 15th spot. Couldn't even get the engine started for qualifying yesterday. You could see Carella there trying to set the boat on the turn, boy. But he was coming in there so fast the boat wouldn't settle. The, these new DAC boats, which are built in northern Italy, they've got so much lift in them. Fantastic acceleration, but it makes them very, very difficult to drive in rough conditions as we have here today. So as we look at our leader, Philippe Shepin, right there is the man pursuing him, trying to close up in a big, big way as Alex Corella, who is in his 34th race start. He hasn't won in the last five. He's got seven wins in his last 17. Four of his last ten. You can see him coming out of the final corner last time around. It was just a hair over two seconds. As we check it now, as it both boats come by, and now Corella shaved another half a second off between first and second place. It's down to 1.55 ticks. But really, the way that Chiap is siding his way through this traffic, he is driving a blinding race there. We see him there, and we can see again Corella trying to do something to try and close that gap, having all that dirty water off the park markers. He's got a handful in that boat out there today. You can see him just behind Chiap. Chap's boat looks a lot more stable in the water. Corella's is just all over the place, and he's doing everything he can to try and close that gap, but doesn't seem to be able to do it. Ten laps in the record books. 24 left to go on this 34 lap Grand Prix this afternoon. This is the 19th Grand Prix of France. First time we've been back in eight years since 2007 when we raced on the West Coast in La Rochelle. There's a beautiful view from upstairs as you can see how this course pans out with the long straightaway and you can see all the traffic out here. It's great to have so many boats here and it's important for the drivers, the leaders to snake their way through 2.34 seconds as you look back on beautiful Evian from the air. Believe me, his chap came out to the last corner there and I just wonder whether he's not pushing things too hard. Has he got a little bit more of speed in reserve? Because he seems to be able to keep that gap. They're both driving so well out there as they overtake some of these back markers. And we can see the Abu Dhabi boat there now, drive by Carella. A lot of pressure on this guy because that team has been taken over by Guido Capellini. And uh, he obviously has told Abu Dhabi that he could do a far better job than Scott Gilman, who's been running that team for a, a number of years now. So there's a lot of pressure on that entire team to show that they can deliver. Jonathan, as we watch the later, we've got a tremendously tight battle going on for fourth place right now. Jonas Anderson just ahead by one second over Yusuf Al-Robian, who is just one second ahead of Jesper Fars. Sami Celio, see, got four boats within about two seconds fighting each other. Jesper Fars now feeling the heat from Celio. Celio slides by him, and now he moves up into the fifth spot. You see, this is what we were saying, Steve. It's all about opportunities to overtake. And for such a long time, we've not been able to see that. But here today, in the midfield, boats are changing position all the time. And it's making for brilliant spectator value. As they come whistling past us here, you can see our leader working his way around the right-hander coming straight at you from the east. As the man in second place, Alex Corella, the three-time world champion, is still about 2.7 seconds back. And right in front of us, pulling away, is Ahmed al coming off the race circuit. Shame for the Emirates team driver. Packing it in today after running uh, only nine laps. There you can see the more boat again looking really good on the water. You can see he's, he's got total control of that boat, Steve, and it makes it easy driving. He says the boat, he doesn't need to overdrive it to get the speed, to get the acceleration and the top speed. But these boats here today accelerating out of these turns from 0 to 60 mile an hour in something like two seconds. Top speed they're running here today around 138 mile an hour. There's your battle, Jonathan. Three boats right there all tied up together in that fourth place battle. We knew it was getting hotter and hotter. Now you've got Yosef Arobian with Jonas Anderson and Sami Celio and Jesper Force not too far back as they fight for that fourth place spot. Well, we could see that Anderson had moved up from fifth to fourth, just overtook Robayan about two laps, uh, two laps before. Now Robayan has got him back. He's in that fourth, and Sami Celio pushing like hell in that sixth spot. Back farther was Jonas Anderson trying to figure out a way to get around uh, the man who started in second today, Yusuf Al-Robian, the driver out of Kuwait in that number nine machine as they come through the right-hander. There you see Rabayan, and he continues to fight. Look at the battle here. Sami Celio as he slides by his teammate, but a whole gaggle of boats heading down toward turn number five, and Celio desperately trying to hang on the sixth spot, and right behind him is Jesper Fors in the seventh spot. You can see Anderson there just getting a bit of dirty water. Celio gets a little bit of a cleaner line. Boy, are they pushing. Celio now... <laughs>
into fourth in that last lap he overtook Rubayan on the back straight and he overtook um, uh, Jonas Anderson and Celio in fourth and now being able to make some ground on Torrente who's hanging on there in third and Francesco Catanda we haven't much mentioned him much today he started all the way back in the 17th position he's moved up into the 10th spot again the drama building down at the far end of the course as they work their way around this man and you can see boat number 51 that's uh, Christoph Larigo the driver getting a chance to run for his very first uh, race he has joined the Amic team with Marit Stromoy Stromoy is sitting down in that 13th position and uh, she's struggling today yeah and I don't know what happened there but Jonas Anderson in the traffic as we went down the far end of the circuit he tried to go on the outside he lost a lot of ground and now his teammate Jesper Force just overtaken him to that six slot so Anderson now down in seven and having to do all that work again yeah Jonas Anderson has struggled a bit he hasn't won a race in 40 starts his fourth in Doha was his second top five in his last eight races and uh, tell you what he's uh, he raced here back in uh, 2007. He started ninth and he made it on the podium. Yeah, and we're watching Terente here. And he told us, Steve, yesterday, he said, if I can get a top five, I will be so happy. Although he's 20 odd seconds behind the lead boat of Chiap, I reckon what he's done, he knows that he's got a safe gap between him and Sel Sammy Selio in that fourth position. He's just going to drive a careful race, get some points. If he can finish on the podium, he told me that would be a dream after only sitting in this boat yesterday for five minutes before the Grand Prix. Yeah, he continues to battle in that spot as they uh, work their way around this race circuit. And Sean Torrente, the two-time North American champion, looking for his first world championship. He finished third last year, finished runner-up to his teammate two years ago, Alex Corella. And uh, for uh, the youngster from Miami, he is looking for his fourth career victory. He's won all three, and they've all been in Doha. Yeah, you can see a bit of a battle there as well between uh, Cantando and uh, Benevente, the, po uh, the Portuguese driver. <clears throat> and you know we've spoken so much about Cantando in the past haven't we I mean he should have won two or three world championships in my in my opinion but the problem being and what do we have here on board with Chiap and the boat has stopped Philippe Shep of France is showing that the boat has stopped we're on board he's not moving obviously huge news for all the tens of thousands of well, race fans well. here what a shame what a rotten shame for all these people that came here to watch and everybody's in shock right now as the driver from Rouen, France, he's the world champion, was looking for victory today and move himself up into that number one spot just like a year ago, Jonathan. He finished second at the first race and got no points in the second race. Guess what? Same thing in 2015. I tell you what, I bet this guy here, Carella, just cannot believe his luck because he had a fight on his hands there with Chiap, and Chiap seemed to have the edge. He seemed to be smoother out on the water, and for sure, he, he seemed to have that speed. And damn, it's such a shame that he's uh, broken down there, because they were reliable, and we got four set just before spinning out on the turn, boy, Steve, and Jonas Anderson taking back that slot from him. Well, Jesper Fors, is the young 22-year-old out here, and a learning curve for Jesper Fors. This is only his sixth start. He had his uh, fourth was in Doha. Well, he was finishing uh, oh, two and five. Steve. And he wow. spins out. He goes all the way around. Lucky he didn't barrel roll the boat. He slid it off to the right. 180 degrees faking, facing the opposite direction. Gathered it back out and came back. That was pretty dramatic stuff. Not only was it dramatic that he didn't turn the boat over, but there were a load of other boats closing down on him. And boy, they just missed him on that top turn. Sammy Celio is slid up now into that third place position. Sean Torrente moves up into the number two spot. And with almost 20 laps gone out of these 34, Alex Corella has taken over the lead. The driver from Italy, who's a three time world champion. The 30 year old here has seven wins in his last 17 starts. It's been four races in a row, however, Jonathan, that he hasn't won. So we'd like to take the schneid off and really help out this team, Abu Dhabi. Uh, a uh, conglomerate of a very large group of 25 people that are involved with this race team, including Guido Capellini as the team manager as he came over after Scott Gilman left. And the big thing is, is they've got uh, Brendan Power out there powering this engine and Alex Corella feeling very much... <laughs> oh! 
much at home now with Team Abu Dhabi with Brendan Power with him and David DeWall helping out too. Yeah, brilliant driver, there's no question about it. I mean, he was brought into the sport by Massimo Rogero, <coughs> building the, uh, the Bava boats in northern Italy. A lot of competition between that boat builder and the DAC factory, which are very, very close to each other. And from under his nose, Brendan Power <laughs> pinched him away, uh, put him in the Qatar team, brought him along, and uh, boy, he's driven really well over the last couple of three years, and certainly as the front drivers, you almost see Sammy Sellio blowing that boat over as he goes down that far end of the circuit, Steve. Sammy Sellio comes out of the corner. He was really struggling going through the right-hander. True, he's in third place. He's almost a half a lap behind Sean Torrente in second, but he's desperately trying to get speed up, and as he goes by us here, as you look at our leader right now, Alex Corella, he does have the speed back, but here's where he made the mistake. Almost losing it. Almost went airborne, blew it over. He came very close, but he was able to use the trim tab just enough. Puckered himself back down, settled the boat down, and himself, and continues on for this veteran for Sami Selly on his 126th start. He raced back. His first start ever in Formula One was in France in 1998. Yeah, and the boat, uh, Massimo Ruggiero was telling me they've altered this boat dramatically since the uh, Grand Prix of Qatar. They've made the sponsor slightly different. In The angle of the sponsors is different. The positioning of the actual cockpit has been changed as well. And I think he's a lot, lot happier with it. The problem was they have, didn't have time to test it until yesterday. And in qualifying, they were saying they use their normal qualifying propellers. But because the boat is so different, Steve, they've had to sort of regroup as it were, and it's going to take him a race or two to get the boat dialed in. As you can see now, trying to slide up Celio. We'll watch his struggles on water a bit, but you're right. They may have gone a bit too far in the design to begin with, and they've kind of been backing away and coming back to what they call normality yep. with the design, and it seems to be working a little bit better for Sami Celio, but Celio is due as uh, Sami Celio coming into this race hasn't won in the last seven races. No, Rubai in there now. <coughs> Excuse me, still in that fourth position, hanging on there. He's way a little bit further back at the moment, but if he finishes in fourth, Steve, I say he'd be really happy because they put on a blinding performance this weekend in what is a very, very small boat in these rough conditions. In his 21st start, his best finish in four races was Doha back a year ago. Last year was a washout. He had a terrible year, two DNFs. Two crashes, got penalized once. Boy, he just wanted to restart everything. So he rewound the clock and rededicated himself this year in 2015, and he's doing well. He certainly is. And so talking about first, second, and third, we've got a DAC followed by a Baba, followed by another Baba boat. Engine-wise, tuner of the leading boat, which is Carella, is um, Brendan Power. Uh, second running Torrente, that is Nico Van Akelian from Belgium, and Sami Selyo in third, he's running a, an engine which has been tuned by Alex Ledden uh, in Montreal, Canada. Eric Stark, you see him on the screen, the rookie driver who just switched teams. Now he was with Team Nautica, and Paolo Gilman runs that team. He has now moved over to the Emirates team with Scott Gilman, now running that team, and uh, for him, he's up in sixth place. He's already got two podiums, Jonathan. This driver, who is uh, one of the Swedes' best uh, hopes for winning a world championship, this is his ninth start. And all of, you can see Jonas Anderson there in the spray as he tries to take one of the back markers. And for sure, Eric Stark in that sixth position, trying to close down on him. So he's trying to make the move as two Swedish drivers fighting their way around this race circuit. And uh, as they go through, you can see that Catando is pushing as hard as he can. And he is trying to move up. Catando is up to seventh place. Tell you what, the veteran driver from Milan, Italy, is pushing hard. Now he's got 12 career victories. And Catando, who is starting in his 151st race, has been on the uh, podium many times, 42 times in his career. And he would just love to make it uh, happen today. He is still on a charge, so hats off to a driver who started slowly but been consistent in pushing, and he's coming up farther and you farther. Know, there's 10 laps to go, Steve, and anything can happen out here. We've already seen that today. Shock that we saw Philippe Chap, who had real good reliability last year. <laughs> Oh! 
something's gone there, whether it's on the boat, the engine, or the electrical side, we won't know. But there you see our leader there now, going down that straight into turn number two um, <coughs> in the Abu Dhabi boat, Alex Carella, who seems to have everything under control. As we watch the boat slide out, there you see our leader with uh, Duarte Benevente going off the picture, disappearing back in the paddock. A shame for the Portuguese driver as we look back on our leader. As he comes through, Alex Corella starting race number 34 this year in his career, and he has had 10 victories. Jonathan, he's been on the podium in 20 of his 33 starts. He's winning about one out of every three races. That ain't bad math. No, very consistent. But what we've got to bear in mind is he's also had some good breaks because people could see he had potential, and he is always sitting in one of the best boats as we see Cantando there. Oh, what a shame. On the water. Looks like the man out of Italy has parked a boat. And also, it looks Stop. like Eric Stark has stopped. And the yellow flag has come out, Jonathan. Let's see if we had an incident. We didn't notice it here on the monitor, but Stark is way down toward turns five and six. And a look at the nose cone on the boat. Oh, my, he has taken a hard hit. And look at Catando and Stark in his battle for position. Catando just turns in on him. Catches just a bit of his engine with his pickle fork in the left oh. side. And he barrel rolls and slides to a stop upside down. Stark gathers himself back up. But Catando going in at that angle. Let's look at it again here, Jonathan. Stark got the water. It's He can do what he wants there. Catando just far too near to him there. Drives right up into the back of his engine. Spins and does a, does a, a barrel roll. Stark, both drivers, okay. They're fortunate that they got away with it. But... Uh, I think Catando's been a little bit optimistic there to try and overtake him on that turn. Well, Catando, as we talked about earlier, as you look at that uh, beautiful DAC boat that's now uh, sadly injured in the nose uh, right up front there in the capsule. And uh, But really, Catando is moving up. He had, we just talked about him moving 10 spots forward, going from 17th in last up into that 7th place position. But... Got a bit too greedy going into that corner, Jonathan, and uh, there you go. You take uh, Eric Stark out, who struggled this weekend, and uh, he's had a tough weekend so yeah, far. Yeah, he has, but you could see Cantando, I think he had the speed on him, and he was on the inside, but Stark's boat was three quarters of a boat ahead of him, and of course, he was probably hoping that he could snick inside the turn boy there. Stark would have to take a slightly wider line. Stark backed off because it was very rough on that turn there, down at turn number five, to get round the corner. Cantando was still accelerating, drove straight into the back of them, of him, and uh, that's curtains, unfortunately, for two drivers there. And it's good to see that the four-time Formula 2 world champion is okay. He settles down, will take the seat. Now, yesterday, oddly enough, in Q2, with just a lap and a half to go in the final just over a minute, his teammate, both he and his teammate were trying to get up into the top six. Eric was in the eighth position and his teammate Ahmed Al-Hamli in the seventh. You need to get into the top six to have a shot at a solo run for pole position. Well, what happened was his teammate just in front of him blew over Ahmed Al-Hamli ending the session and missing out on an opportunity to maybe get in the top six shootout. So Eric Stark uh, missed out yesterday, and now he misses out here today. Yeah, and you know, Steve, <clears throat> um, where you are on that pontoon, is it, it makes a big, big difference. You know, you could see Chiap, he got that pole position. He had a straight line straight in, but we'll go back to the accident again. And As he takes it now, going to the inside and trying to go quickly to the outside, Francesco Catano just hammered in the, in the back. But again, it could be a racing incident where you're trying to get in, as you say, try to slide over very quickly as they headed into the corner, and he just couldn't get the room that he needed. And uh, the two hooked up, and over Catando went violently as he barreled to a stop, and Stark uh, spinning out, ending his day. Yeah, I think Stark slowing down somewhat just to get into that turn. As I say, Catando not being able to judge his speed. And what happened was that the pickle fork got actually stuck into the side of the engine. And although I think if Catando tried to back off, Steve, there was nothing he could do. He was just a passenger in that boat. And, of course, the boat, boat, both boats were committed to the corner, so they were both actually turning, and Catando Cantando's boat then obviously went over the top of uh, Stark's boat, dragged Stark's boat back. He did the somersault, and uh, there we are. They're still there. They, you know, they're still sort of there to fight another day. But uh, such a shame when you see something like that happening during the uh, Grand Prix. <laughs> Good news, physics.
physically for both uh, drivers, they're okay. And now you can see uh, Francesco Catano waving to the many fans, thanking them for his bold effort that he gave today, moving up 10 spots and a great, great run until that uh, mishap down in the corner, down in turn number five. Well, this starts to bring the new drama, Jonathan. We've got a new story to write right now with six laps left. We've got all of a sudden our driver from Italy here, Alex Corella, who was just out for a cruise. He was a half a lap ahead of Sean Torrente. Well, guess what? Now they're going to suck up right behind him as they'll be almost sponsor to sponsor on the restart. What do you think? Well, I can tell you now, Steve, the crew chiefs, the guys in radio communication with these drivers, this could make the difference because basically what you're in a situation there where Torrente on the restart and these drivers will not know where this race is going to be restarted. So the crew chiefs are going to be watching the UIM uh, commissioner. When he drops the flag, it's time to go. And if they get the timing better and the trim of the boat, so it's trimmed perfectly for acceleration, we may see a change here between uh, Sean Torrente in that second slot and the lead boat uh, of uh, Alex Carella. Yeah, well, I'm also keeping an eye on Sami Celio because I think Celio is starting to lay down quicker times than Torrente here in those last few laps. So it could be a switcheroo. We'll have to wait and see how that pans out as we wait anxiously for the pace boat to make sure that all the Ospreys get back into position. Now they're done moving Catando off of out of harm's way, but they've got to get back into the position on the race circuit. And for the Ospreys, it's fantastic. They got new boats and uh, new motors. Yeah, good spot there, Steve, because the other thing was that we did speak to Sean this morning and he said that the engine seemed to be down on power a little bit. So, you know, is this going to give Sammy Celio, who's now had a bit more time in that boat, because like we said, up until yesterday, he hadn't tested the boat. So he's got a bit more time in the boat. He knows the handling characteristics of the boat. Is this going to give him a chance to pounce? We could see a change in the lead. We're definitely going to see a, a change for positions as we go further down the field. There you see Philippe Shep just becoming an unwanted spectator sitting there. Got the best seat in the house. The only problem is his seat is stopped and he's done for the afternoon. Well, we're getting set, Jonathan. Five laps, dash for cash. Here we go. This will be fantastic. It's going to be all or nothing for these final five laps. This is really heating up to be something special here. It's fantastic to bring a race like this back to France after being gone from eight years. Yeah, it's a it's been a great venue. They've made us feel really welcome here in Evian. There's no question. Fingers crossed we'll be coming back here for many times again. The number of spectators that we've had here over the last two days has been impressive. And like we said at the beginning, Steve, they're racing on an open circuit for the first time with long straights, opportunities to overtake. You could see the battle there for first and second, and then that bunch in the middle of the field, Jonas Anderson, Roms, uh, 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 Sami Celio, and, uh, you know, Torrente, all battling for positions there, and they were changing all the time. And this is what... This this is what makes great Formula One powerboat racing. We had at one time three Swedes and a Finn fighting for those positions. And uh, fans in front of us are cheering yeah. as the Osprey team brings in Eric Stark. Yeah. Wet but uh, okay, smiling, knowing he's not uh, going to need any more attention. As you see, some of the wonderful VIP areas that have been brought out here for these thousands of fans that have turned up here on uh, Lac Le Mans. And this is commonly known as uh, Lake Geneva. As we were, we're about uh, less than an hour drive to the east of Lake Geneva on the south side of this race circuit here on this lake. And you look across, you see Switzerland. Now, interesting, Steve. Okay, so we've got Chiap, we've got Torrente, Sami Celio, Al Rubayan, the guy that was really quick yesterday, who's going to be right beside him as they on, on the restart. Alex Radovanovic is he's a demon with this. He can read the driver well. He'll be telling him exactly how to trim that engine so that he can get maximum acceleration and maybe steal a place from uh, Sami Celio there who's hanging, in, hanging on in third. Uh, and of course, some nice pickings for people at the back of the field now. We've had three boats out already ready uh, these guys have got a chance to make up a bit of ground there and you know all of a sudden they come into the points absolutely you got Celio back in third the fin then you've got uh, boat uh, number nine coming out there running and of course uh, that's uh, Yusuf Al Robian from Kuwait that's going to be a heated battle expect yeah. to see them all bunch up Corella try to make good as escape from the rest of the field in fresh water but it's going to really be a real hard five uh, boats <laughs> Oh. 
right behind him, trying to maneuver to get on the podium. Al Hamley now, he's, oh, he's, he's sorry, he's out. But uh, Sammy Sell, your Jonas Anderson, we saw him take two or three positions, you know, earlier on in the race when they were back markers and they were overtaking them. He's no slouch, that's for sure. So Sammy's going to have to watch behind him in his mirrors because I think Jonas Anderson may pounce on him, come on the restart. Well, the pace boat continues to sit out. There you see uh, Luis Ribeiro from... Uh Portugal, and we're so excited about heading off to Portugal in our next round coming up in about a month's time. We're going to go to Porto and uh, put on a, a fun, fun exhibition. I've heard that Porto is going to be one of the best venues ever in Europe. It should be exciting right in the center city, and uh, we expect yeah. uh, hundreds of thousands of fans to cheer on these drivers here in a month's time. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that event as well. And uh, if we get as many people there as we have here, and they say there's going to be a lot more, then it's going to be a blinding event. Let's just hope that they keep that long circuit uh, uh, idea that they brought here to Evian, uh, and they move on to Porto and, and do exactly the same thing there. And uh, I think it's going to be really, really exciting. We need re uh, races in Europe, and I know that Nicolo de San Germano the promoter of Formula One has been working endlessly to try and get more races in Europe because at the moment we're very busy in the Middle East, the Far East and Asia, but you know, Formula One powerboat racing started in Europe with European drivers and it's great and we've seen so many ex-drivers here this weekend that have come along. We haven't seen them for years just to savour this unbelievable spectacle that these guys are putting on out here this afternoon. Well, as they circle out of turn number six, heading back down, interesting aspect. you got to think about this, Jonathan. You've got uh, your leader out there, Alex Corella. He is going to set the pace. But now you've got the second boat off the right hip with uh, four laps to go. You've got Torrente forced to the inside. you got Celio, who's down in the inside lane. So will Celio get the jump? We'll have to wait and see as they wait for the final Osprey rescue team boat to get back into position. Maybe this next time around we're going to go because we're down to less than three laps. This will be a sprint to the finish. Look at Corella pulling away and Torrente backing off just a tad, playing a bit of gamesmanship here as they head on down through. There you see Luis Ribeiro as he is uh, looking from his location, his flag station, waiting and knowing that this is going to be a sprint to the finish. And five different boats make that six in the top six going to be fighting for podium positions. This will be a barn burner to the very, very end, Jonathan. Three laps to go, Steve. Boy, this could be the most exciting racing that we have seen in a long time because it could go down to two laps. And he's got the green flag up there. He's holding it. Are we going to have a restart any minute? Are they going to let them wide open as they get up the top end of the circuit? There's a bit of space up there for them, Steve. But we can still still see the uh, the uh, lead boat there of Corella. Corella yeah, going sliding across. through. Yeah, what is happening here? Why are they leaving this such a long time then? I mean, Steve, can you see any problems out of no, the water? And, and I Luis can't. is very upset. He wanted it. He thought maybe he had it done. We got all the boats around the corner. He was about ready to wave the flag, and he, he couldn't get it done here. And Corella now has gone past the pace boat. So what is happening here? So obviously we've got a rookie driving the pace boat. So uh, that's possible. Now the pace boat will try to get in front of Hang the on. leader. Corella slowed down again. And let him by. So where is the pace boat going? Pace boat's now back in front of the field, going through turn number five, heading for six. So a bit of miscommunication. And guess what? We just lost a lap of uh, racing because of yeah. it. They're going to have to get it back now. So. We're down to 30, on to lap 32, so we'll have a, a two-lap dash. Now, Steve, you said earlier it was a three-lap dash. You can see the boats jostling for position there as they come around again. Has the two-seater pulled off the circuit? No, yeah. he's still out there. He's still through. Looks like he may wait until we get farther down. He's off the circuit, Here Steve. he comes, seconds before the start. Now we expect to get the green flag. Off he goes. Corella's starting to move in front of everybody in the field. And we wait to see if we get the green flag. Corella's got a great jump. Torrente's backing off. He's jamming everybody up behind him. Three or four boats. And he's got the green flag there. Luis didn't like what he saw there, though. It looked like he might have thrown it. He wanted it. Throw it down the straightaway. Corella took off. 
Torrente backed up and then he jammed everybody up behind him. And so he's going to now let them move out through here. The and other thing is, look, you, at the moment, you've got Corella way in the lead. These guys should be much, much closer than him for the restart. Are they going to do it here on the back straight? Let's take a look. Have to wait and see. We look for Sean Torrente. Has Torrente uh, coming through? We're here looking we for the driver. Here we go. As they come by, Here we go. Jonathan, I continue to look for Sean Torrente as they come by. Torrente is missing. He, he's not there. He's he's off the circuit. The guy that was leading, that was in second position, has had to pull off the circuit. No points for Torrente. Oh, this is really a surprise here for the man who is leading this championship coming in, as uh, Sean Torrente. Cruising at the back. Oh my goodness. Obviously, with some problems, some major problems oh here. Oh my goodness. And Torrente has to be bitterly disappointed. He came and so very close and he's coming to a stop. He's trying to keep the engine going. And he's struggling to get around the race circuit. Looks like he could be out of fuel, Steve. You could see the engine pick up and then drop off, pick up, drop off. We're still on yellow. 33 out of 34 laps. They're closing up, Steve. Less than two laps to go. We hold our breath now. Still some confusion down here. Everybody bunching closer and closer. So Torrente is out of the picture. This leaves Sami Celio be... with Yusuf al Robian in that third spot. And Jonas Anderson in the fourth position trying to hold off the charge and pushing by Philippe Rahm. So here we go. Steve. As they come down into the final corner. Maybe we'll get it this time when they come around because we'll be down to just over a lap remaining if they give them the green flag at this point. Can't see the UIM official, so we can't see the flag. So all we can do, Steve, is look at the boats out there and hope that they're going to restart. We are now on the final lap. Torrente stays out there. He's going to pick up some points, I think, because of him uh, making uh, lapping moves earlier in the race. And they're going to bring out the checkered flag, Jonathan. Well, I'll be. So here, as they work their way through, Alex Corella with Sami Celio and Yusuf Al Robian back in the third position. Jonas Anderson in fourth. Philip Roms right there with uh, Jesper Fors in that uh, number 15 Swedish boat. So as so they circle they threw through, Jonathan, I'll tell you what, that was a surprise. And the checkered flag's coming out. And the president of the UIM is going to wave it. And coming around the corner. And taking the celebration of victory is Alex Corella. Congratulations to the Italian as he picks up the victory. Sami Celia will come home in second. In third, Yusuf Alroban will reach the podium. He's elated. Coming home in fourth will be Jonas Anderson. And he picks up another nine points. And Philip Roms having a wonderful day in that fifth spot for him tying his career best in that fifth place position. And Jesper Four is back in sixth. So you've got a couple of youngsters up in the top six. But that was a crazy ending as Alex Corella takes the uh, checkered flag. And uh, what a shame for uh, Sean Torrente. Torrente is still out there trucking along. Yeah. Down in ninth position, so. Uh, and he seemed to be, that engine, everything seemed to be faultless until they started just cruising around for such a long time before the race was restarted. And you can see now he's on the far end there. It's picking up, dying off, picking up, dying off. Looks like a fuel starvation problem because the engine sounds pretty good, Steve. Jonathan, you've had this happen to you before. I have. <laughs> where you're out in the lead or you're, you're looking good, you're going to make a top three performance, and all of a sudden the rhythm changes. You get out of race trim, and now you're in, now you're in there crawling trim as you're idling, and all of a sudden it really uh, causes sometimes the real problems for the engine. Yeah. So, uh, so there we are. It's a shame that uh, we couldn't finish under racing conditions, but... Obviously, they know something that we don't, Steve, yeah? So Alex Corella picks up the victory, and this is his 11th career, and he uh, moves himself up very close to the lead with two surprises, Jonathan, first and second place, and in uh, the top three for most of the race, you had Philippe Shep, and Philippe Shep had 10... <laughs> of people 
so disappointed that he wasn't able to come home and pick up valuable championship points in the yeah. win. And Sean Torrente, who was right that back there with him in that third place position, found himself into a spot where he limped across trying to go in Torrente's. Yeah, He's right has, in front of us. And has, <laughs> has he stopped in front of us with the TV cameras just to show his emotion, Steve? <laughs> And stamped the top of the thing and uh, fair play all credit to him he's, he's driven perfectly all weekend isn't he and uh, that is such a shame that when they're ticking over with two laps to go <laughs> that he loses that uh, what would have been a well-deserved second position and uh, I bet Sammy Celio who's now slotted into that position just cannot believe his luck so Sammy Celio picks up 15 valuable points and uh, for Celio, he's got to be very pleased with the way the results turned out as uh, he was struggling to get even a podium spot. Sean Torrente. Now asking, he's right out in front of us if you look at the uh, points here with Corella jumping up into that number one spot with 27. And uh, Sean Torrente dropping down into that number two spot unofficially with 20 points as you look at all the driver's point championships out in front of us here. So a great day of racing ending with uh, the two boat crash down in turns number five and six stopping the proceedings forcing the drivers to go around you know a total of well over six laps and that seemed to throw out the rhythm a bit and then we weren't able to get the race started it looked like two laps before the end Jonathan they were going to bring out the green flag, but they had a bit bit of a miscue with the pace boat. A rookie driver getting a chance to drive the pace boat for the first time actually uh, let Alex Corella get past him, and then he was forced to go back in front of him. So, yeah, uh, yeah. other than that, beautiful day here in the Alps and a great race. <laughs> hey, Alex Corella picked up the win. I mean, the bottom line is, you know, he... Uh, he, he did deserve that win because, you know, after Chia pulled out um, and Carella was pushing hard in that second uh, slot, you know, um, he came over, he, he led the field by, by a country mile. So I, I'm not taking anything away from him, even though they finished uh, on the yellow. I mean, he did deserve that win. And uh, Rubayan and Celio and Anderson there, uh, second, third and fourth, they were fighting it out tooth and nail, weren't they? They changed positions about two or three times during the Grand Prix and uh, Sammy Celio came out uh, in that second slot with Rubayan, who I'm sure would be very, very happy to be on the podium. Absolutely. So Yusuf Al Rubayan, this is the first time ever he has been on the podium when the podium was actually held. It's the second podium ever, but he missed out on going to the podium because of a transgression of a driver a couple of years ago that was disqualified. He was in fourth, he moved up to third and he missed the podium celebration. Yeah. Well, he's not gonna miss it today <laughs> no. as the driver from Kuwait finishes in third with Sami Celio in second. Another podium for the driver from Finland as he gets his 40th career podium today for Sami Celio and a fantastic uh, day for the driver from Finland. Let's take a look back in the race. It was pretty exciting from the start, and most people here in France were expecting their native driver, Philippe Schepp, to power away for victory, and he led early. And on the start, he got a perfect ace of a start, and it was a good battle behind him as Sean Torrente was right there. Alex Corella was holding on and staying within distance most of the time for the first third of the race. Corella was trying to make a statement and push him a little bit. Didn't get a chance, the biggest surprise of the day. Philippe Shep dropping out of the race, leading it over way down toward turn number one. And then we had a few mishaps. Jesper Ford somehow saved it, ended up finishing in seventh place today as the young Swedish driver somehow miraculously slid to a stop without barrel rolling. And then more mayhem on the race course. Here's Catando with Eric Stark on the left. Catando had moved up 10 positions in the race, got a bit greedy, got into the corner. Eric Stark at the same time may have been slowing down a bit too much for Catando to believe. And the two of them made it up. They hooked up here and they both went over. As you can see here, Catando did a complete barrel roll and spinning out Eric Stark, who almost submarined the boat totally, damaged the front end of the boat coming off so both drivers coming to grief coming to the end of the day and from the rest of that let's get Tando was okay
believe they were under a pace boat situation. And with the pace boat, Alex Corella did not have to answer the bell. We didn't get a dash for cash that we were hoping for. But at the same time, he'll come back and celebrate. And this Team Abu Dhabi picks up their first win of the year. And oddly enough, the first time with uh, engine builder uh, Brendan Power right there alongside as we look at a very forlorn Sean Torrente, who did finish in the sixth spot despite bringing that boat barely across the line. What a great day here in France for those stations leaving us now. Tell you what, thank you for stopping by for my partner Jonathan Jones and all the great international television crew saying whether it's good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever in the world you may be at the moment, you've been watching the most exciting racing entertainment on water, the UIM Formula One World Championship. It's been a fantastic day of racing, and congratulations going out to Alex Corella for winning the first race of his uh, season this year. So stay with us. And throughout 2015, in the meantime, you can follow all the news by going to our official website, www.f1h2o.com. Until then, on a beautiful, spectacular afternoon here, picturesque city in Evian, France, I'm Steve Michael saying so long, everybody. Wow.